They have decided to embezzle our hard-earned earned money from out of the kitchen in Jamaica to pay themselves. It is embezzlement, it is thievery, it is wickedness, it is stealing, it is scamming, it is wickedness. And they refuse to roll it back. Yes, Sunday morning. A beautiful Sunday morning on the island. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome, Aquaba, to the space. Thank you so much, Asante Sana. Just the right kind of uh, cool ish. <laughs> it's been hard these last few days. In between a little bit of rain, the May rains didn't come the way that we expected them to, the way they should and the way they usually do. So we're looking for drought conditions. And I'm not speaking with any authority, just with the authority of the ancestors, (laughs) ancestral authority, to say we can uh, put our finger on our tongue and stick our finger in the air and tell you if it's going to rain. Or we can just look to see the direction in which the ants crawling and all the sky look and the color of the sky and the shade and the so on of the clouds but seriously though uh, so May has come and is going it's the 28th today and we haven't had the kind of rains that we'd usually have in May and it hasn't been raining in the way that we're used to over the last few months. So here we are. I think with some considerations of uh, drought. Uh, we still haven't managed here in Jamaica. And it is a shame that after so many years, we still haven't managed to find um, more innovative ways to store water. To catch and store water. Um, our rainfalls go to waste. Our rivers are drying up. Why do you think the rivers are drying up? This is a serious situation. I know that in Portland, there's some serious, serious uh, concern for rivers that are being literally, um, almost deliberately, you would have to call this, dumped up or, or, or cut off from its source. And so that is that consideration. So construction is causing a lot of our rivers to dry up. We see that happening in Portland. We see that happening in St. Anne. We've been talking about the St. Anne situation in this space and also the St. Mary situation. So um, in areas where... And and for people like us who live on this side of the world, you see, this side of Jamaica, who are used to crossing many, many rivers to go anywhere we want to go, we are very, we're acutely aware of the fact that the rivers have dried up or are drying up. We're also also aware that construction, whether it is is the road construction or building construction, is responsible to a large extent for a lot of the rivers that are drying up. And then they're going to tell you about climate change, you know. They're going to come tell you about climate change. And they're going to tell you that it is... What is the other one? Then call it again. There are two things they say. So they're going to tell you it's climate change. That is when they have gone out... These people are demons, you know. (laughs) Oh, goodness. They're going to teach our children in schools. And they're going to have tons of money being thrown at climate change conferences and they're going to get people from academia and activists and so on to come in and sit down and talk about climate change and what you must do to ensure that you are not contributing to the hole in the ozone layer or whatever them call it. And I know I, I don't want to, you know, to sound facetious. It, it, is, it is what it is. And we deal with the isness of things on this program. Difficult for somebody like myself to not 
deal with the isness of things. It was against my personality and my character to not call it as I see it. And so it is what it is. So they're so they have given um, our rivers and our water sources and all of our, you know, um, watershed areas for the most part over to people who are constructing massive developments, housing developments for the large, for the for, 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 for the most part, and also um, road networks, right? And and if you're building roads, find build roads. I mean, it's good. We need the roads, but hey, there must be a plan. When you're doing all of this to save the watershed areas and to preserve and to protect the rivers and the water sources, what is the end result of this? What is the end result of all of this? What are we going to tell our children about their future? synagogue of satan which is a parliament of jamaica we see unregulated individual self-interest and all of this being applied to public policy this is what is happening individual self-interest that is not regulated and then they apply these um self-interest to public policy this is what is happening so that we don't know because no, you know um no proper auditing no done we don't we, we can't even audit properly but we know how a, a country like china operates for example on the continent of africa china really doesn't hide it they don't see anything ethically wrong with paying monies under the table um to get what they want and i'm sure that that was done here in jamaica it is the isness of things and as they, as they continue to do that, we see a widening, a widening of, of this gap between the wealthy and the few, the impoverished. We see a widening gap between the wealthy and the impoverished. And this is crazy. One more and this is this is being overseen, you know, with precision by these very same demons in the synagogue of Satan, which is the Parliament of Jamaica. I'm going to take a quick break and come back because Nepa, Nepa, which is supposed to be regulating all of this, sits comfortable, comfortably, in the office of the Prime Minister, overseen by the Prime Minister. It is the isness of things that matter, nothing else. The isness of things, if we're going to fix it, we're going to have to diagnose it. To diagnose it, we have to check it and call it. In this Christian country, which is Jamaica, we are reminded on this Sunday morning of the story of the rich man. Is it Lazarus and the rich man? Is it Lazarus? Lazarus and the rich man. Remember that story? The Bible story. And I'm not so much interested in the story, all of the story itself, but towards the end of the story, where the rich man is having this conversation, and he says, he was told, he was told that, well, he was asked, he asked, let me just the, get, get this right, he asked for, because of what he was feeling, in purgatory, <laughs> he asked for Lazarus, and he was told that there was a gap, this widening gap between him and Lazarus, this gap, you know, the same gap that we see between the rich and the poor here in Jamaica now, this chasm. And so that even if Lazarus wanted to go check him to help him out, there was no way that he could do that because there was this gap, you know. And he said, well, if that can't happen. Get somebody to go to my family and tell them that the way they're living is wrong, that they can't give themselves 100 and 200 and 300 percent salary increases while the people suffer. Because the end result and the consequences of that 
include this torment in this purgatory that I'm experiencing now. Go and tell them to roll it back. Go and tell them to roll it back. And what did God tell him? God tell him, so listen. <laughs> they have Moses, took Moses, and the prophets. They have the Advocates Network, and they have the Africa Forum, and they have Andre Stevens, and they have Mutabaruka. <laughs> they have... Moses and the prophets. And if they're not listening to them, they will not, even if a dead man get up out of the grave and go and tell them to roll it back, they will not roll it back. Read the story again of Lazarus and the rich man. Read the story. <laughs> when they're abused from the pulpit. And to buy into certain ideas and cultural practices that ensure that structural violence remain in place because part of this is the understanding of suffering and what is suffering and who must suffer. So as long as, as, long as you have to suffer to go to heaven... As long as you have to suffer, Sean was rewarded with another term, another session, another time because she has been told that she's doing what? She's on a project now and she can't. Them can't take off the project, so she's still a minister of, the Minister of Education. Favor Williams has failed the country. She has failed the teachers. She has failed the students. She has failed on every single level in the Ministry of Education, and yet she has been returned in the cabinet shuffle up. Shuffle down, shuffle round, shuffle. It's not a reshuffle, it's just shuffle. You have a card pack and you shake it up and a shuffle. And it's everybody drop out same place. So Favel Williams is returned to the minister, Ministry of Education. What kind of fool? This is what we talk when we talk about structural violence because you see this kind of violence, you, you, we have no control over it and, it and we can't. Remember, you know, we're not seeing it, you know, but we're feeling it. And that is the most insidious is, is a kind of violence that is being pulled off against the people of Jamaica. And do you think, do you think that you can solve physical violence if you do not address structural violence? In no iteration of, of life can you solve physical violence without addressing structural violence. Do you know why? Because structural violence is the cause. It's a cause to a large extent of physical violence. So, structural violence is politicians giving themselves 200 to 300% salary increases while social services such as the hospitals and the schools collapse under the weight of mismanagement and poverty and lack of public funds to make them work. That is structural violence. We have been driven into unspeakable depths of poverty and suffering. That is structural violence, while politicians insist on giving themselves 200, 100, 230, 214, 300% salary increases and refuse to roll it back, pretending that they don't see the people demonstrating in front of the Ministry of Finance calling, Nigel, where are you? The Minister of Finance has an obligation to respond to the Advocates Network and the people who have been demonstrating in front of the Ministry of, of Finance for the last four days. You have an obligation. You're rude and out of order. Home pay. The take-home pay for the teachers that thought they fooled the nation the other day by giving the in charge of ourselves. Make sure you register to vote. There is a 63% of our electorate that didn't vote. 
in the last election. Make sure that you register to vote. Some of us need to go to your door one by one like they do in America and help you to get registered to vote. Make sure you register to vote. We're going to have to put ourselves in charge of ourselves. That is the only solution. We were talking about that Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. They have decided here in Jamaica, without us, without asking us, without asking our children, they have decided that Jamaica is a service industry. Jamaica is a service industry. So we have hitched our wagon until that which is going out, unless we're going to be slaves and enslaved. Because now we're moving or have already gone into a new era, the fourth industrial revolution, um, revolution moving into the fifth, which is going to ensure that all these categories of work and uh, of labor that we have uh, created so-called service will be done by robots, artificial intelligence. This is where we are. So what are we going to tell our children about their future? So we have decided, they have decided in the synagogue of Satan that this is a service industry. And for them, service means that they have to produce a slave labor class to serve the plantation class tourism industry and the servant class the servant labor class BPOs minimum wage backdoor entrance into your place of work requires little or no education or intelligence so why pay the teachers when all you need is a slave labor class why pay the, why pay the teachers it is deliberate they're driving the teachers out of the classroom you can't stay there bigger than it appears and it is what it is appearances to the mind are of four kinds things appear to be even when they are not here in Jamaica it is inequality inequality that is playing this crucial role in shaping our lives and we see that this is closely related to our income. The planter class know that. The synagogue of Satan know that. And so what we have in Jamaica is that the poor are pushed into poverty and they die miserable and early deaths. So unless, unless we fix the structural violence the social, economic, and political structural violence. Unless we fix that, we'll never get rid of the physical violence. No matter how much money you throw at it, no matter how much guns you throw at it, no matter how much cameras you throw at it, no matter how much police vehicles you throw at it. Because you are only dressing the part with the scab. The part with the pus and the corruption all of that is underneath. The structural violence which has been carried out against the Jamaican people, you know, we find ourselves at an economic disadvantage. The overwhelming majority of us are at an at economic disadvantage. And the more, the more we are at this, this disadvantage, the further we get pushed into it because the government of Jamaica is in bed with the private sector and the elites and they're taking away from the poor to give to the elites and the wealthy making them more wealthy so what we are ending up with and they're taking away from the poor they're embezzling our tax monies that we put them in charge of we entrust I see if we are saving away you know. <laughs> The tax money that will work and pay to fix the road, to ensure there's no structural violence, 
that when we want proper health care, we get proper health care, that there's proper education, all of it, the social facilities are in, infrastructure, okay. They are embezzling that money to pay themselves, and we are okay with it. We must take them to court. I know there's some, I think there's some people taking them to court already. Come to think of it. We found ourselves, and this is, this is documented information now, you know. This is not just me making this up. Under, the stru- under structural violence, the kind of mental illness that, 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 that occurs is, a, is the same kind of mental illness that we're seeing here in Jamaica. Ill health. So when the Minister of Health says Jamaica move because we have all kinds of lifestyle diseases... The lifestyle that's causing these diseases in the Jamaican people is not just of the Jamaican people eating because they're eating the way they're eating because of structural violence. But it is what you have built into the system, which is violence against the people of Jamaica, an insidious kind of violence that we cannot see but we can feel and how it manifests itself. It manifests itself into ill health, mental illness. Increasing symptoms of depression, missed educational opportunities, teenage pregnancy, obesity, criminality, the chopper syndrome, anxiety, stress, early deaths, chronic illnesses, lifestyle diseases. The children of the poor doing worse than your children in school. As a matter of fact, you don't send your children to school. You homeschool your children and then you take them out of the system and send them to tertiary institutions overseas. That is violence against the people of Jamaica. Structural violence. School dropouts. And you can't find them. You say they have dropped out and you cannot find them. And wonder which hole. Where is this massive chasm? This massive gap between the rich and the poor that our poor children are tumbling into. That you cannot find them. What do you mean you can't find them? What do you mean by you can't find them? Indebtedness. Indebtedness. You find, look at any Jamaican right now. Any Jamaican who not in the synagogue of Satan are related to anybody from the synagogue of Satan, which is the parliament of Jamaica or any of the elite, and ask them how much money they owe. Every single Jamaican is heavily indebted. And some are borrowing from the companies that are set up to lend money in Jamaica. And the the, um, interest rates are very, very high and they're ending up in debtor's prison. Do you know that there are debtor's prisons in Jamaica? There are people who are sent to prison in Jamaica because they owe the money lender a whole lot of money and they have to pay with a pound of flesh. And you're giving yourself 100, 200, and 300% increase. Go ask the people in a debtor's prison who in a prison because they borrow money if you send them to go to school and they cannot pay it back. How that go? And one, one, of, one, of, one of the most serious things that, have, that has happened in this structural violence, you know, that they are, they're pulling off on us is the fact that we have lost faith in each other. We have lost faith in each other. We are suspicious of each other because we're fighting for the scarce benefit and spoils. We hate each other. We gossip about each other. We kill each other. We turn upon each other. That's what they want. We mistrust each other. Because as we look around us, we see our chances of living a long and healthy life decreasing and decaying and rotting each day. And they are giving themselves 100, 200 and 300 percent salary increases with retroactive pay. Do you understand what retroactive pay mean? It means that them put the salary, even though them give us the salary increase for right here, so it's effective right now. Then put it back, collecting monies from last year and possibly the year before. Retroactive monies. Retroactive pay. It is wickedness. It is madness. It is wickedness. It is egregious. It is wickedness. 
and the Advocate Network and the others are out there demonstrating, protesting in front of the Ministry of Finance and they have not got it. Will someone from the, from the Advocate Network let me know if you get any answer from Nigel Clark, who is overseeing the neoliberal project in Jamaica? These people lack empathy, you know. These people lack empathy. And if them lack empathy, you cannot appeal to them on any level. As a matter of fact, when they demonstrate, them think good of it, them get narcissistic supply from it, them feeding off of it, they are demons. These are the kinds of negative things that they feed off. Remember me tell you that. They love the attention. Because if they didn't love the attention, they would have already responded to you. They're arrogant. They're arrogant. They're arrogant. Somebody send a scripture, come give me Luke 16, verse 31. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Luke 16 is a Christian country. Please take out your Bibles. Luke 16. If they do not listen to the masses, if they do not listen to the masses and the advocates network, And those of us in the media who are calling for it to roll back. And the activists, if they do not listen to them, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. So that if Bob Marley and Marcus Garvey and Sam Sharp and Paul Bogle rise from the dead and tell them to roll it back, they will not listen to them. So what is the end game? Where do we go from here? KSR community. We are experiencing Jama- in Jamaica what you call negative peace. Negative peace. Because we have not addressed the sources of structural violence and wickedness against the people of Jamaica. Negative peace is not peace. Is not peace. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here is a question. Chaos, our community, or do we find ourselves going back into slavery? Because what they're doing deliberately is to push us back into slavery. But before I die, before I live and be a slave, remember now to go and register to vote because because we're not going to die and we're not going to be a slave remember to register to vote and we're calling every single third party every single third party that's registered step up to the plate step up to the plate Every single third party that's registered here in Jamaica, step up to the plate, make we call the election. Do you understand what I'm saying? Before I be a slave. This is a power we have in our hands. And we're not going for a hunger strike, but that's one way to go. We are going to vote. We are going to vote. Go and register to vote because they must call the next election. Do you understand what I'm saying? Before I be a slave, Sam Sharp already fought the 1831-32 Emancipation Wars. Baba Paul Bogle already led the rebellion and the war against injustice and wickedness and high salary increases for the plantation class in the Morant Bay War of 1865. Oh, 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 1938. We've been through that already. And all those labor wars. Oh, 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 
Now we say everything is on the table. It is a zero-sum game. It is now or never. They have decided to embezzle our hard-earned earned money from out of the kitty in Jamaica to pay themselves. It is embezzlement. It is thievery. It is wickedness. It is stealing. It is scamming. It is wickedness. And they refuse to roll it back. But I want to tell them one thing. You touch the money there. You see the money there for taxpayer money. You don't take on the hand off it. You see the money they want to have have on the hand pan. Well, that is taxpayer money. All of we taxpayer money. We pray over that. We work all kind of OB over that. We are go straight back to OB. And a lumba, lumba, obu. We are go straight back to the source for all our taxpayer money. When it come in on your hand, you can't hold it. If you won't roll it back, you cannot hold it. You cannot hold it. What upon your credit card? Or cash? Or any denom? <laughs> Listen, you cannot hold it. You cannot hold it. We have cried over that. We burn with belly with red cloth and ball over that. You understand what I'm saying? You cannot hold it. 100%, 200%, 300%. We're not going to, listen, you cannot hold it. You cannot hold it. And I'm saying to the people of Jamaica, pray over your money. Pray over your money. The money the way I work, pray over it. Whoever you pray to, ask them, say, when that money go in the hands of these thieves who have given themselves 100, 200, and 300% increase, that when that money go into the hands of these criminals, no. that it drop like a hot cake, that it gives them all kinds of bumps and sores. Make it so that they cannot hold it, and if they hold it, they can't sleep at nights. Make it so that they cannot hold it. And anything that they touch with it will turn to ashes. Pray over your money so that they cannot hold it. God, this is where we are now. It's a spiritual warfare. We we'll use everything in the arsenal. Call on your ancestors to take charge of the money there.